So you might be wondering, why is this even a question? When I was playing Stardew Valley with my friends, a friend asked, why does shearing sheep makes it happy? And another friend answered, because it would feel hot and annoying to have such a thick wool. After all, it's like wearing a thick fur coat on a sunny day. And so, my friend asked again, so what does the wild sheep do then? Because sheep couldn't set their own wool, right? And so I asked, do you know what a wild sheep looks like? And they don't know. And so I thought, oh, maybe it's not a common knowledge after all. And so, let me raise this question. What exactly is sheep? Let's talk about the basic. Sheep is an animal, of course. It is a mammal. It's an even-toed ungulata in the family of cows and goats. More specifically, the goats. That's why it's the goat! Sheep are relatively small, compared to other bovid at least. They have a recurved horns like a spiral. This type of horn is used for ramming, rather than stabbing or clashing between horns. While most sheep have horn, some breeds doesn't. These kinds of breeds are called pole. Okay, time for a disclaimer. In this video, when I said sheep, I mean only the domestic animal, which is named Ovis arius, of all sexes and ages. The other wild species in the genus Ovis, I'll call them wild ovins. Alright, moving on. So, let's talk about ancestry. What does sheep came from? This one is actually not as simple as chicken. Because sheep is called Ovis arius. That's it. It is its own species. According to research, sheep's closest ancestor is Mouvlon. But be careful, when talking about Mouvlon, there are, typically, two Mouvlons. The Asiatic Mouvlon is what is now commonly believed to be the ancestor of sheep. The other Mouvlon, the European Mouvlon, is considered to be a viral subspecies of early domesticated sheep. While it seems to be relatively clear and simple, it is actually a confusing subject in zoology. Let's talk about the Asiatic Mouvlon first. So, nowadays, several sources use Office Melini as the valid species name for the Asiatic Mouvlon. In the past, scientists uses Office Orientalis as the valid name for Asiatic Mouvlon. This Ovis orientalis has several subspecies. One of them is Ovis orientalis vinae, which is called Uriel. In a 2010 research, it has been proven that Uriel itself is a distinct valid species. It has been given Ovis vinae as the valid name. And so, a problem lies in the type specimen of Ovis orientalis. The type specimen of Ovis orientalis is, probably, a hybrid between the West Asiatic Mouvlon and the Uriel. And so, at the 6th World Congress on Mountain Ungulates and the 5th International Symposium on Mouvlon in 2016, a consensus has been made to use Ovis melini as the valid name for the Asiatic Mouvlon. And yes, there is a congress dedicated to goats and sheep, by the way. Anyway, this is why several sources use Ovis Melini as the scientific name, including Wikipedia, by the way. But the thing is, several research in the last few years still uses Ovis Orientalis as the name for Asiatic Mouvlon, which could be confusing. And, 
Same with the European mouvelon, but quite simpler. Some scientists consider this animal to be a distinct species under the name Ovis musimon. Earlier research has also shown the close relationship between European mouvelon and the domestic sheep, which is why some source may state that this mouvelon is the ancestor to sheep. Nevertheless, further research has shown that these mouvelons are actually just a very early breed of sheep, which still looks like the wild ovens. A research in 2021 has stated that it's probably a hybrid between an early domestic sheep breed and an extinct ovin in Europe around 6,000 to 5,000 years before present. You could see different scientific names in regard to this animal, which are Ovis musimon, or Ovis melini musimon, or Ovis aries musimon. So yeah, might be a bit confusing. But at least, this one has musimon in all of its name. Oh, and if he goes back to the question regarding wolves, the European mouvelon could be used as an example. These are probably one of the closest sheep to the wild ovens, after all. The European mouvelons and wild ovens doesn't need to be seared because, well, they don't have thick wools that continuously grows like the sheep you see in several farms and medias. Their hair usually grows longer for protection against cold in winter. After that, the long hair will be shed. Sheep has been domesticated since around 10,000 BC in Southwest Asia. Early sheep were most likely domesticated for their meat and probably also milk. Domestication for wool most likely only started during the 4000 to 3000 BC. Molecular studies on sheep has revealed a relatively high genetic diversity, especially in comparison to other domestic animals. This hints to the fact that there are most likely several waves of distinct domestication wave. Even so, there are also a high degree of allele sharing, which hints to the fact that these different domestic breeds were often crossbred between each other. At least there are two distinct groups of breeds, which are the European breeds and the Asian breed. Not only that, Research also shown that there are several cases of integration between sheep and wild ovens, which also contributes to the high variety of breeds and characteristics. There are probably at least a thousand of sheep breeds. They are generally domesticated for three things, which are meat, milk, and wool. So much of our pet. Some breeds have horn on both sexes. For example, the Jacob sheep. Some have none at all, which I've talked earlier in the video. For example, the Paul Dorset. Some breeds might even have more than a pair of horn. For example, the quite famous Hebridian sheep and also the Jacob sheep. These conditions are called polycerate. While most sheep know they have wolves, some sheep breeds have hair like their ancestor. These type of breeds are called, well, simply, hair sheep. These breeds don't require shearing. Like the wild ovens, some might grow longer hair during winter and shade their hair after. And so, there you go. What seems to be a common animal, white and fluffy, as depicted many times in media, is actually more diverse and complex. That is the wonder of domestication. It could produce a character that seems quite outrageous compared to the natural character that is. Who knows what could happen in the future? For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now.